What's good, O'Shea Duke Jackson channel? It's your boy O'Shea back at it again with another interesting interview. Now, I'm thanking you guys for the support this year. Have a happy holiday season. We're back with our second interview with our brother, the Sonny Bravo YouTube channel. I'll pretty much let him explain who he is and what he does. What's going on, y'all? Sonny Bravo, Action Over Talk Personal Training. I'm an up and coming YouTuber. I make um, fitness content, but I've been diving more so into manosphere content, giving guys advice. I put my little spin on it, song form, poem form, and doing reaction videos pretty much. All right. And we definitely thank you for joining us in the content space. We need more black men involved. But the other day, um, you know, I, I think I saw you were on the SPK fitness video. And, you know, SPK Fitness is now, uh, you know, he's grown a lot more and he's now moving from moved from the United States to Mexico. Now he went to Colombia. And I saw a comment and you were like, man, I like to travel, but this child support shit is really, really killing me. And I was like, wow, like if he feels that way, I know it's a lot of guys that feel that way. I mean, was that a joke or it's actually the truth? No, nah, it's no joke. I travel all around the United States, but, uh, right. you know, back when I was broke, you know, when I started having kids and, you know, you in your early twenties, you, you know, finding yourself and everything like that, you get put on child support. You start racking up back through child support. You can't get your passport. Wow. Uh, okay. I think it's anything over five or 10 grand, something like that. You can't get a passport. Can't leave the country. You locked in. So let me ask you this. When you were a, a younger man, like, did you know the 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 dangers of child support? Did you know, like, you did you hear anybody talking about it or? Nobody had absolutely no idea. Let me let me ask you this because a lot of brothers, um, like when you, if you don't mind me asking, because obviously, you know, some people are gonna be like, well, you know, if, I, if you get on child support, you know, is is your fault? You know, you should pick better women and stuff like that. Like, were you in relationships? Like when you first got with the lady, like how was it? Was it like, it was a relationship that went bad or it was just like, you know, something like that. Yeah, I actually was in relationships. And you know, when, uh, when you were a little younger, you kind of, you were a little bit more blue pill as, as we would say in the manosphere. So you feel like, right. oh, you could stay with this one girl and things work out. If you put your best foot forward, it'll be the same return. But, at the end of the day, a lot of things don't work out and things women are sometimes incentivized not to work out, out the relationship benefits and things like that. So uh, it's kind of non-marriage childbirth rates in our community tend to be so high because it's kind of incentivized not to stay with the man. If he's not at least making a certain level of income and still finding himself and things like that. <clears throat> it's interesting you said incentivize incentivize in what ways well you know you get the benefits from the state you can get the um you know housing you can get um you know food benefits um mm -hmm. get a check from the dude you, you know what i mean things like that you know, let me and, know. And, and then there's certain housing to where you know they can only get it if the man isn't in the house right Right, right, right. And let me let me ask you this because a lot of guys like what's the whole because I don't have children. Um, what's the procedure like for brothers that actually when you first get on child support, is it something that that you know she she goes and does or do you agree to it at first? How does it work? Uh, there's a little bit of mystery surrounding this. So some women say when they go apply for benefits, they say, "Oh, well, where's the dad and um they have to put him on child support in order to get benefits i found that that's not the case because i got custody of two of my children and i've had them at the child support office when i was going to pay back through child support ask oh well why don't you put uh the mother on child support and i'm like nah man i'm not i'm not messing with y'all i don't believe in y'all system i'm not digging it in any way i don't want the man in the middle but so they wait can make minute. the decision got, whether or not to collect child support so wait a minute, you got custody of your kids and they still made you pay it? See, that's the thing. So I have three kids. I have custody of two now. Um, okay. But I'm paying back due from back when I was not able to afford paying my child. I've been paying my child support consistently on time for like two years now. 
But back when I wasn't able okay. to afford it, it piles up and piles up and piles up. And I was like 35 grand in debt with child support. Wow. Okay. How much? And you knocked it down. Okay. And so you, 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 you're making strides on, on I'm making that debt. strides. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably okay. about halfway there. Okay. No, a salute to you, bro. Let me ask you this because a lot of guys like now, when you were, you know, you got put on child support, was there ever any, you know, any of the baby mamas like try to like not get you to see your kids or you still, cause a lot of brothers go through that. Tell me about that, man. Yeah. So with my oldest, so my oldest is now 13. I'm 33 years old. My oldest was born when I was 20. Uh, she was pregnant when I was 19. And we were together for a while. I actually moved out of state to be with them. So they had to move to Florida. Her parents were in the military. You know, uh, I grinded it out. I, I moved out there and was with them for a while. Um, but we ended up back here and basically we broke up. And once after we broke up shortly thereafter, she took my son, dipped off to California, uh, got in the Air Force. So I was like, damn, I have very short notice, kind of a messed up situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, then I just ended up going out there as often as I could, maybe every six months. And keep in mind, I'm broke at the time. I'm out there hustling. I'm, I'm rapping. So I'm selling CDs out there. I'm selling T-shirts. I'm doing what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. To make my little trips and grinding out here, working in the restaurant, doing whatever I got to do, basically at the time, figuring it out. So y'all broke up. And then she just left. Just took the kid and left. Uh, Yeah, not, not too long after. Within probably a year after we broke up, she just pretty much took them and dipped. And once and once a woman takes your child out of state, it becomes that much more difficult to try to fight in court because there's not really ways to do that. Like you'd either have to go to that state or you have to set the case up uh, for a parenting plan before she leaves the state. That That's an interesting point because LAR Movement, who wrote a book called Lessons of a Non-Custodial Father, mm. had his baby mama do that like five different times. She moved to like, Five different states. Yeah, yeah. My baby mom's moved to a few different states. Like my oldest is now uh, on the East Coast, and we're actually kind of cool now. Like we worked out a lot of situations. It's been a lot of time. You know, we were estranged for a long time, but um, yeah, it's tough, man. You just got to try to. You got to just keep fighting and try the best you can to maintain a cool relationship with the baby mom. Try the best you can to reach out to the kid, let them know you care. I feel like if you're doing everything in your power, eventually your kid's not going to be a baby forever. So they'll learn, you know, where's my dad? I want to talk to my dad. And then you get back in communication and kind of start to bridge that gap. What would you say for a lot of young black men right now or black men who don't have children and, you know, they want to have a relationship and, you know, situations are a little fickle with, you know, a lot of brothers being on child support what would you say what they should look out for? And you know, looking back at your at what you've been through, you know, what would you do differently in, you know, selecting a maid or getting with a woman or, you know, how would you do it differently now? OK, uh, well, there's certain characteristics I would look for in selecting a woman in general when it comes to dating. Uh, you know, even though it's not as common, you know, two parent home looking for. Um, there's a whole laundry list of characteristics that a lot of us in the red community look for in women in general but honestly there's no guarantees and with the uh, rates as high as they are of uh, children being born out of wedlock and women leaving a relationship and that's another mis misconception that's common like we have a reputation for leaving the relationships and leaving our families but in a lot of situations women are the ones that leave they want to uh you know maybe find a higher value guy at the time or whatever the situation may be and they might still love you as, as a baby daddy like you might still be able to smash but they're gonna be find her uh at starbucks in the grocery store or at the park or doing something that you like to do maybe if you into lifting weights like me find a female that's into working now and you know kind of has her time taking by positive activities and not yeah, just positive activities. Okay. Doing activities similar to what you're into. If you're into lifting weights, a chick that likes to lift weights, you know, things like that. Not just an Instagram model or, you know, female that's very vain and things like that. Right. I'm glad you said that because a lot of brothers, you know, that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at, you know, if we're going to get with a woman, you know, do we have any common interest? We're looking at what she's looking like and it could be that she just, 
you know, doesn't have anything, uh, uh, you know, else to offer outside of what she's working with. So I'm glad that you did point that out, brother. Um, let me ask you this, because, you you know, when you got put on child support, you know, obviously, I know it takes a lot of your 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 income away. How are how are brothers like yourself um, still able to find ways to, you know what? I know that they're taking my income away, but I'm finding other ways to earn to pay this off. How did you how did you go about doing that? So when you get put on child support, uh, minimum wage job is out of the question. You got to either work in the restaurant industry to where you can get tips. You got to be selling. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. You got to maybe be selling legal substances. Uh, you got to find a way to either get cash or get a whole lot of money. You know, get in. I dabble with a lot of different things. I ended up getting into different aspects of sales. And I feel like that's the way to go. You can get to the restaurant industry. You can get into certain waiting tables, bartending. Things where you can get a lot of cash and your check isn't the primary part of your income. Okay. Okay. So let's say if you are a person that um, you're getting a lot of tips, you don't have to claim tips, things like that. You have to claim some of your tips and some of these restaurants are getting kind of tricky to where they put the tips on your check. Like in Seattle, there's a lot of that going on. That's part of why I got in the, out of the restaurant industry. Um, but if you can get cash tips, you don't have to claim those. You just got to really claim the ones that are electronic. So it's like a percentage of your income and your check gets taxed by that, but your check isn't your primary income. You use your tips to basically pay your bills and live your lifestyle. And if you grind and do doubles throughout the week in a restaurant industry, you can really make some money. You know, I know people that make five, six hundred dollars a day in the restaurant industry pre-COVID, you know, 2020 BC. Wow. COVID. OK, OK, OK. So let me also talk about this, because I mean, I know it's um a mental thing to like, man, I got put on child support. How do I get over this? How do I defeat this? Because a lot of guys get put on child support and they beat it. You know, they're able to get custody of their children. How are you able to get custody of your children? So one thing you want to do when you get on child support, you want to get it modified because at the time when I was put on child support, I had zero income and then I started working for Burger King, but they were charging me like the majority of my monthly income in child support. So I got it modified lower. Um, and then as far as fighting for custody of your kids, honestly, I was in the courthouse on and off for months at a time. And toward the end, when I actually got my daughter, um, I was in the courthouse for like pretty much a week straight every day, asking questions, um, getting the paperwork, going down to um, law library, printing stuff out, paying for that. Um, it's a process, it really is. And you, um, I feel like finding maybe someone who's done it or finding a paralegal, someone who's not too high cost, to uh, help you with it, but you can do it yourself. I did it myself. You know, I filled out the parenting plan and different paperwork. You just got to take your time and really read through it. And when you submit it, they'll kind of help you along the process, but they'll really have you running all around that con uh, that courthouse. And you damn near feel like a paralegal when you're done with that process. Um, the thing is get a parenting plan first before try to get it early as possible. You know what I'm saying? Because if she, uh, takes the kid, puts you on child support and all that. She kind of has an upper hand, especially if she files a parenting plan first. Let me ask you this. How do you, I know this is a, a little different, right? Because, you know, a lot of times in our, our community, in the, in the black manosphere, we talk about not dating women with kids. And, you know, it's a, it's a big no, no for most guys, but you know, what about you? You know, you're a young man, you have children, you know, do you get discriminated against because you're a father? I mean, it's a little bit easier for guys to date, but how do you handle dating, you know, when you have, you know, children and, and things like that? How do you how do you tackle that situation? So my thing is, if you can, if, as a man, if you can attract women, you're going to attract women. I don't really even think they consider it as much. Maybe if you're going to get into a serious relationship, but for a lot of women i feel like that's an afterthought just like just like um if you bring a female home it's your obligation to use the condom she ain't gonna make you use the condom you got to use the condom a lot of women don't care it's kind of the same thing with kids they don't care as long as you can take care of yourself you making money you making moves i haven't seen it as a problem at all really okay so it, it hasn't it hasn't stopped you from doing anything the only thing is time constraints. Like the kids might have to go to a babysitter or something like that. You know, right. I might go on a Saturday night. You know, I'm grinding throughout the week training clients and stuff. So my weekends get pretty free. And then I can, you know, maybe get a babysitter. Like, hey, I want to kick it a little bit, you know. 
let me let me ask you this. You know, at, looking back on this and still trying to develop, like having time, you have two children you live with, you have this business you're trying to start, you know, you, you YouTube is new for you. You have all these things you're trying to do. And I don't know how deep the support system is, but mentally you keep going. You keep you know, powerlifting. You keep doing these things, trying to improve yourself. What keeps you going? Motivated because you're, you know, you're a guy that you're always on the move. You're always trying to learn something new. Um, right. You know, you. Uh, what, what what keeps you uh, going? Because that might be a you know inspiration to a lot of the black men out there that are listening to this that might be a little down and out because of COVID and everything. How do you keep mm-hmm. uh, being successful? Although this <clears throat> has been a setback for you for you. So my motivation is my past because I've had a hard path, you know, um, trying different things out, trying out sales, um, failing, falling a lot of times. The thing that keeps me going is the thought that at least I'm not in jail. So whenever you down and out and you at your lowest, be like, at least I have the opportunity. I'm a free man. I can go out here and make something happen. I can learn a new skill. I can get my education. You know, I'm out here in the free world and I'm not locked down like a caged animal. That's so whenever you get your lowest point, that should inspire you. At least I'm not in jail. Be happy. You got your freedom. You got plenty of opportunity out here. You just got to find it. Now, speaking of that, I'm glad you mentioned opportunity, because a lot of times, you know, with COVID-19, it wiped out a lot of stuff for some, you know, a lot of industries were affected. But I keep hearing you saying opportunities, even with, you know, situations that you've been in. How much opportunity is still out there for young fathers, young brothers like yourself that are out here trying to get it? Do you think that COVID-19 has stopped opportunities from coming or what do you think? Okay, I'll I'll give you a a list of things you can do to get money right now. Um, They got the food delivery services. Um, A lot of people are making money with good money with Instacart, you know, DoorDash, things like that. You can get out here if you're an artist. I mean, CDs are kind of dying, but honestly, people see you out there hustling on the grind or if you have merchandise or something like that. I've done this myself for years on end at a time as one of my side hustles. You can pre- uh, get some CDs, get some merchandise, go out there, sell it at corner stores, um, in the city, wherever you're at, you know, pull up in your car if you got the whip, play your music out there if you got good music. Um, I sold DVDs for years. I was the movie man. Um, that that was a good hustle at the time. That's kind of dying off, but you might be able to still at least make maybe a hundred dollars a day doing that. Um, once the restaurants reopen, get in the restaurant industry. Uh, I was a pedicabber, which a lot of you might not know what that is, but look it up. You can do that, like music festivals, things like that. When that starts opening back up, and maybe some other states like Florida that are halfway open, you might be able to do that. Uh, you know, Texas, Austin, or some shout out to my people in Austin, Texas. Um, I mean, there's a lot, get yourself a skill with this time. If you can't make a lot of money, you know, if you got to work minimum wage jobs or, you know, do some of the things I just mentioned before, get yourself a skill. You know, I became a personal trainer, get yourself maybe a construction, construction trade that pays great, good money. You know, you can get 30, 40 plus an hour doing that. Um, I mean, there's really a lot of value in just getting a skill or a trade or if you're the type of guy that, you know, you know what you want to do education wise, you want to become like a veterinarian or, you know, something like that. Get your four year and continue the college course. Right. And the, and the good thing I like about what you're saying is don't give up. So you put that in our a WhatsApp um, chat box was the importance of not giving up. And a lot of black men, you know, around the country. Um, you know, when I, when I come back, I, I could just see it in their face. A lot of brothers are just giving up, you know, and, and I'm glad that we have a brother out there that, you know, it's a brother that was in maybe a situation that was t- is a tough situation to be in. And, you know, he's, the brother's still improving his life. He's still getting out there. And uh, I'm just so glad to connect with a brother like this because, you know, just like Brother Ike we had on the other day was talking about, you know, being a late bloomer. And it seems like in your case, it's the same thing. You know, you <clears throat> had some mistakes and you, you're trying to recover. And I think this is a, is a good, you know, um, time to let black men know that, hey, I know it's COVID. You might be on child support. You might have this going on, but you can overcome it. You know, you can still do a lot. of it's a lot of opportunities out there. And one thing I like about you is as black men, we can help each other. You know, we could continue to network and, you know, bring each other into the respective business that we are in and try to help each other out. Because that's another thing too. Let me ask you this. Like, uh, since you've been, you know, just in black YouTube and seeing like a lot of black male content creators working together, 
Uh, do you think that also helps in in just you know bringing more black men together and and find out what they're doing and, and and stuff like that to build more of a support system? It is. It's really inspiring. Inspiring because you find out okay, you're not alone. Someone else who's who you look up to has been through some of these situations. You know whether it's with women or you know used to be a loser or used to you know whatever the situation is you're like okay so i'm not the only one in this and they made it out of that so it inspires you you can get some ideas and inspiration from that all right all right well go ahead brother tell them you know about your channel what they should expect over there i mean we'll put some b-roll footage maybe here you know you getting your thing yeah, but go yeah, ahead doing a little thing. thing so so it's kind of transformed from a fitness channel uh, and powerlifting channel to more so doing commentary about things going on in the manosphere, um, talking about these type of issues, being a single father a little bit. Uh, I'm also a former rapper, but I decided after I turned 30, I'm too old to be a washed up rapper. So I utilize rap music to tell stories about things going on in the manosphere. Like look up uh, my recent video, Dr. Dre wasn't blind. I kind of made an animated music video for that. You feel me? Uh, and then I'll talk about things going on in the manosphere in a response and kind of like a poem form. So I'm doing things that make my channel a little different, a little interesting and things just having fun with it, man. And still figuring it out. But I'm kind of going into that lane with it. Also, I did a response right. to TKO's response to Kevin uh, Samuels. And that was pretty <laughs> funny. That chick is crazy. Yeah, yeah, she definitely is that. And so the thing I, I'm just so glad, man, that, you know, we have, you know, the new the new content creators, you know, the guys like yourself, you know, coming into this space. You know, you're definitely taking the business serious. You know, I see the production levels are improving and stuff. And, you know, you're a young, a, a young I, I call you guys, you know, you're not that younger than me, but, you know, the young kind of creators coming up, you guys are good, man. And I want to keep, you know, exposing the, the brothers. I want all the black men that are here, go subscribe and support our brother, Sonny Bravo. Go to his first comment page at the top. And, um, you know, we need more black men in the space. We need more creators because I don't want you to be, because I'm, because stop the show. I'm going to be done with you niggas probably next year. I'm going to be I'm gonna be done dealing with y'all. I'm going over there with the white folks and make all the money. So when I leave, <laughs> I'll, I'm trying to expose you to as many people as I can. So he's a good brother. He's coming up. We're going to continue to working with him. And brother, any last words today? Man, y'all, just stay encouraged out there, man. Stay inspired. I know it can be hard with the COVID going on. The world's kind of turned upside down. But just find a way to improve yourself, educate yourself, stay on your grind. I mean, I wouldn't have thought. A year ago, I'd be talking to O'Shea right now. Like, I've been watching this guy's channel for, like, two, three years. You know what I'm saying? And and now we're, like, homies. You feel me? So it's just, like, stay on the grind. Stay inspired. Stay motivated. Hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I like to give God's advice. If you, if you know what I'm saying, if you need some advice, some direction, hit me up, man. I'm a, I'm a, just a dude, you feel me, that, that likes to help people. So, yeah. Uh, we'll, and we'll put the um, email on the screen. He'll give it to me. We'll put it in the post editing, and, um, you know, we'll do that. Uh, go ahead and tell the, you, tell the email you want them to, to, to do it, and we'll put it there. Yep, AOT personal training at gmail.com uh, on Instagram. I am Sonny Bravo. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, actionovertalk.com for personal training. Yeah, man. Sonny Bravo on Facebook. 100. All right. Guys, it's been real. As you know, the buffoon remains at all time high. I'm out.